Hey, what's up everyone? Derek here from Simnet Nutrition. Thanks for joining me in my kitchen for another video. So today I just want to make this quick little video talking to you guys a bit about my Instant Pot. So if you follow me on Instagram or you watch my stories or anything like that, you will know that I use it quite a bit. And whenever I post anything that I make in here, I always get a bunch of questions. What's the recipe for that? What settings do you use? Is it worth it? Are they healthy to cook with? So today I hope to answer those questions and give you guys some ideas on what you can cook in your Instant Pot if you have one. And if you're on the fence about getting one, maybe this video will help you to decide. So just before we start I want to make it clear that this is not a sponsored video instant pot did not pay me or has not reached out to me to talk about it or anything like that I bought it on my own money and this is just simply my own impressions of it so the first thing I want to address is that in spite of its name instant pot it is not instantaneous like I think a better name for it would be like your food's gonna be ready in just short of an hour pot or something like that because when I got it I thought it was gonna be like instant I thought it was gonna make rice in like five or ten minutes or whatever and you see that you're like you see that it cooks beans in like 12 minutes but that doesn't take into account the time that it takes to heat up and build pressure and then the time after that where it takes to like release pressure and cool down or whatever so it doesn't take all that long and the nice thing about it is it is really convenient so you can just like set it and then walk away and you don't have to worry about foods like burning or anything like that so it is really nice but it is definitely not instantaneous so I'm sure most of you guys that are watching this channel already know what it is but for those of you that don't know what the instant pot is it's basically like a pressure cooker however it's not really like the sketchy old pressure cooker your grandma used to have that like looks like it's gonna like blow up uh, this is a lot different than that it's really easy to use and it has like a lot more features I think at least I don't know I never had a pressure cooker <laughs> so there's definitely like a lot of buttons on here and a lot of features and a lot of them I don't use so don't be intimidated by all the features that it has on it but it does do a lot of different things it can be a pressure cooker a slow cooker a rice cooker yogurt maker saute and searing pan a steamer and a warming pot and it's all in one this definitely sounds like an infomercial doesn't it <laughs> But the most important thing for me is that it makes cooking things like beans, rice, and legumes really easy and really quick and you don't even have to like soak them first, which is awesome. So the one that I have is the Instant Pot Mini Duo 7-in-1. <laughs> and uh, it's one of the smallest ones they have. I think it is the smallest one. I kind of wish that we'd got a bigger one now. However, we didn't know how much we would use it when we first got it. And for like a person or two, I think this one's probably an okay size. But if you have a family of four or whatever, or you're a big eater, you want to meal prep in like large batches, you probably want to get a bigger one than the mini. So one thing that I really like about it is that the cooking surface is made of stainless steel. So rather than using uh, some like uh, non-stick surface that will get like scratched up over time and start leaching into your food uh, Yeah, this one's totally stainless, which is really nice I can be a little bit habitual in my cooking and with the Instant Pot it's no exception I do tend to cook the same type of meals in this but the formula that I kind of have created works really well And uh, I enjoy it so I don't see anything wrong with it And I'll show you an example in just a minute of something I made the other night But basically what I do is like I'll just add some sort of like carbohydrate with the protein so uh, like rice with lentils or maybe some potatoes with some beans or something like that and then I'll just chop up a bunch of veggies that I know can take the heat corn and carrots are a couple of good ones add that into the instant pot and then I'll usually use like some veggie stock or I'll just use water with some spices and then that's it I just press the bean and chili button turn that on for like 12 minutes or so and yeah you just set it and forget it it turns out amazing like every single time so here's the meal I made the other night in it and yeah this is a pretty good example of what we cook in here all right, so I'm just in the midst of throwing a bunch of stuff into the Instant Pot for dinner here. So I'm gonna show you guys what I'm doing. All right, so in the pot here, I've already got some brown rice and some French lentils. This is a really nice combination. Uh, you can cook it on the stove top like this as well, but yeah, they go really well together in the Instant Pot. And I've got some chopped carrots there as well. I'm gonna throw in some chopped onion, red pepper, and then a bunch of spices. We've got cumin, garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, and I'm also gonna put in some raisins as well. It just adds like a nice little sweetness to the whole dish and they kind of just all dissolve and make it taste really nice. And to add some extra flavor, I'm gonna use the vegetable broth here as the liquid. There's a lot of buttons on this thing and I honestly only ever use this bean and chili button here. And I just uh, put it on for 11 or 12 minutes and everything always seems to cook just about perfectly. If I'm cooking chickpeas, they take longer than this so I usually put it up to about 14. Same with beans. But uh, for lentils, rice, and things like that, 10 to 12 minutes is usually good. So I'm just having it with a salad and some tofu on top. Nice and simple. Got a nice dressing on there as well. So I know you guys are always asking me for amounts when I make things, like how much grains did you put in here? How much liquid did you put in? And I honestly never measure it and I never know because I just kind of do it intuitively. And 
you just have to practice and it's like trial and error and eventually you'll figure it out. I, I definitely appreciate following recipes, but you've got to learn how to cook on your own because yeah, if you just follow recipes all the time, as soon as you try and experiment, you're not gonna have any idea what to do. But if you're not comfortable experimenting, there are so many recipes online and lots of vegan recipes as well. So generally stuff like the carrots and like onions, if you put them in or whatever, they don't soak up any water because they're so water rich already. It's just the things that are dry, like the lentils and the rice that are gonna soak up water. So I always put those in the bottom and then I fill up the liquid so that the liquid goes um, as high above the top of the grains as my first knuckle. Does that make sense? Okay, I do better with visuals. So let's say the grains go up to about here. You're gonna wanna fill the water so that it goes up to there, just uh, at the height of your first knuckle over the top of the top of the grains. <laughs> I'm terrible at this. So to answer the questions that are in the title, is it worth it? So. I mean, that's gonna depend on everybody and it's gonna depend on how much you use it. But in my personal opinion and in my experience, it's definitely worth it. And I don't use a lot of these like kitcheny type gadgets. Like we have a food dehydrator over there and I love it. I just don't use it very much. I've had slow cookers in the past. I just don't use them very much. Other than like the stove and my Vitamix, I really like hardly use anything in the kitchen. Um, oh, like toaster oven as well. We don't have a microwave, but I would use it if we had one. But I definitely do use this a lot more than I thought. And we got it on sale. We got it on sale for, I think it was around $100 Canadian. And if you consider the money that you're gonna be saving from buying canned beans and legumes to the dried beans and legumes that are like so cheap that you can get in the bulk section, you're definitely gonna be saving money in the end. And you're probably gonna be saving money by not eating out as much because it is just so good for meal prepping. So that's all well and good, Derek. We can cook lots of things in it, but is it healthy? Is it a good way for us to cook our foods? So I did some investigating on this and I tried to scour PubMed and uh, the medical journals as much as I could for information on like pressure cookers and them retaining nutrients. And it was honestly kind of hard to find good definitive answers. That's nutritional science for you. But it definitely is a healthy way to cook. Uh, and if you base it just on the sole fact that you're probably gonna be eating more home-cooked meals if you have this rather than eating out, then it is definitely healthy, regardless of how many nutrients get retained in the pressure cooking. Whoa. I let you on the counter so you can say hi to everybody and then you just yell at me. Oh my gosh. You're not supposed to be up here. Everyone thinks we're dirty because we let you up here. So before we look into a little bit of the science that I found about pressure cookers and nutrient retention, I mean, let's think about some of the stuff that we already know about cooking food and nutrients. So the first one is the nutrient being looked at. I mean, we know that vitamin C is degraded pretty easily with heat but then things like minerals, maybe zinc for instance, aren't as affected by heat. So uh, the nutrient being looked at is definitely one of the main factors. Cooking temperature and the length of time that something is cooking for are another two of the major factors. So the hotter something is and the longer that it's cooked for, the more the nutrients or certain nutrients are gonna be degraded. And a factor that's often overlooked is if the cooking water is consumed. So if you can imagine if you cook like a cup of beans in 20 liters of water, a lot of the nutrients of those beans are gonna leach into that cooking water and they're just gonna be gone. You're not gonna be drinking all that water. So, you know, whatever's left in the beans is what you get. However, if you use something like the pressure cooker or the Instant Pot, um, all the nutrients are being kept in the container there. So none of them are gonna be leached out in any of the liquid. So what does that mean for the Instant Pot? Well, as far as heat goes, I would say that it cooks food at just a slightly higher temperature than steaming and boiling does and quite a bit lower than baking and frying. And the reason I say higher than steaming and boiling is because if we remember back to high school science, we know that water, when it's under pressure, has a higher boiling point. So it'll be a little bit hotter, but not very much. But, and I'm not very scientific, so I don't really know how much hotter, but it's not much. So I think it's generally recognized that like deep frying is probably the hottest, pan frying and baking are next, and then steaming and boiling are a little bit lower down, and then microwaving is actually quite a gentle way to cook food as well, which is probably a topic for a whole other video. And we know that the Instant Pot cooks stuff pretty quickly, so it's not gonna be cooking for all that long, so it has that going for it as well. So this one study claimed that boiling and steaming cause significant vitamin C losses, 34% and 22% respectively, while with the other treatments, more than 90% retention was observed. Sulforaphane 
If you guys watched my last amazing food video about bok choy, you'll know why that is so important. Sulforaphane was no more detectable after boiling or steaming, while pressure slash microwave cooking did not cause any significant loss. So I think that's pretty relative to what we're talking about here. If you want to check that out, I will put a link to that in the description down below. And then I found this other one as well. Uh, and it was just a quick mention that pressure cooking increases starch digestibility as well as reduces the levels of anti-nutrients. So it's hard to say indefinitely which is the best way to cook every food to retain the average amount of nutrients across the board. But I do know that the Instant Pot is like a great way to cook stuff and if it helps you to eat more whole foods then it's definitely going to make you healthier and contribute to better health in the end. So I think that's probably all I have to say about the Instant Pot. I would be interested to know your thoughts on it in the comments section down below. And if you have like a go-to recipe that you just love, like why don't you share it with us all so that we can use this as a little database. Maybe we can all reference back and try each other's recipes. I think it'd be pretty cool. So um, I guess I've got to make dinner right now. I might as well show you guys a little something something that I'm going to be throwing together here. So I'm starting off with a bunch of French lentils, but I am going to rinse them first. So I just measured that and that is exactly two cups of dry lentils. Well, they're wet now because I rinsed them, but you know what I mean. <laughs> so I usually add the veggie stock last, but I'm just gonna add it now so I can show you guys how much liquid I put in over top of the lentils. So that little trick I showed you guys, if I put my finger in here and I just put it down till it touches the lentils, you can see it is right at that first knuckle. And then there I've just added two large oriental yams. Now I'm just gonna add some spices. So I've got some ground cumin, Onion powder. So if you had fresh onion, it would go really well in here as well. Just dice it up and throw it in there. Garlic powder. And here is some chili spice. Just figure throw it in there for a good measure. Whoops, lost one. So I don't usually mix it up too much, just enough to get the spices moved around. Everything will all cook and the flavors will meld and everything, it'll be fine. But I like to keep the legumes, grains or whatever I'm cooking on the bottom. I just find it works out best that way. One thing you always have to remember with these is that this little vent is pushed that way or else the pressure will not build. And then just like every time, I'm gonna hit that bean chili button and just set it for 12 minutes. And that's it. So we'll see what we got when we're done. All right, so it just started the timer. So I'm just gonna give you guys a little update of what's going on here. So you gotta wait till this little float valve pops up. So it builds pressure and then that little float valve pops up and then that is when the timer starts. So it'll be 12 minutes from now until it's done cooking, but it has been like just over 20 minutes to get to this point. And then once it's finished, it still takes a good like 10 minutes or so for it to relieve the pressure so that you can open this. So you can see how that would take about an hour. But I still do think it's really like simple and convenient and easy. Like you don't have to be watching it. You don't have to stir it or anything like that. You literally just set it and walk away. And then once it's done, uh, it'll like reduce the pressure and then it'll just keep it warm for you. So it's really nice. All right, so it just beeped telling me that it's all done, but the top is still locked on here because there's still pressure in there. So you can wait until it depressurizes naturally or you can flip that over there and it will take the pressure out of it quicker. So let's give it a little mix here. Get down to those lentils, see how everything cooked. So you can see it cooked everything really nicely. There's no liquid left in the bottom and the lentils are not just mush or anything like that. Yeah, it came out really good. I like to throw some frozen peas in right at the end and just let the residual heat kind of defrost the peas because if I were to throw them in at the beginning, they would just turn all brown into mush and there'd be nothing left of them. So I just added a few other things to this, just a really simple little salad. There's some tomatoes and some uh, bell pepper in there as well. We know that we lose a lot of vitamin C when we're cooking food, so the bell pepper will help to bring that number back up. Then I've got some sauerkraut there and just some avocado as well. All right, so here's the little meal I threw together there and I'll taste it and we'll see how it is. Mmm, really good. Like obviously it needs some sauce somewhere on this dish, but flavor is really good. Such a good, easy meal and so nutritious. So from the moment I pressed the bean chili button, it was about 40 to 45 minutes until it was like fully done and I was serving it. So it doesn't take that long considering it didn't take me very much effort. I didn't have to watch it or anything. It's pretty awesome. All right, so I think that's probably it for this video. I'm gonna go make a sauce for this and enjoy it. You guys will have to let me know what you thought about this video in the comments section down below. And if you guys want me to do some more Instant Pot recipes, I just kind of wanted to do this video just to sort of introduce it 
throw the feelers out there to see what you guys thought about it. So definitely let me know in the comments down below. Like the video, you guys know it helps me out. Subscribe so you can see more from me. And uh, I will be coming to you soon with some more fun videos. I have a couple what I eat in a day videos planned and um, one where Crystal and I are going on like a bit of a road trip and it should be really fun. So I'm excited to film those and edit them for you guys. So I'll see you soon with another video. Yeah, and I forgot to show you guys this little feature that I really like. So this comes out of it really easily and if you have a little lid like this uh, little silicone one that we have, you can just pop it on top of there and then you can put this right in the fridge and then when you're done with it, you can take it out, put it back in here and then reheat it using one of these like 25 buttons that are on there. I'm sure there's a reheat button. It doesn't say anything about heating, reheating. Just use the bean button when you're unsure. 